At the center of the instrument panel are the primary flight instruments, sometimes referred to as a six-pack. The six-pack includes the airspeed indicator, the attitude indicator, the altimeter, the turn coordinator, the heading indicator, and the vertical speed indicator. The airspeed indicator in this aircraft is marked in knots, with a small inner window that follows the needle to show the airspeed in miles per hour. Some aircraft are reversed, so it's a good idea to figure this out before you take off so you'll know which V-speeds apply to you in the specific airplane that you're flying. The attitude indicator shows bank and pitch information, and the tick marks are placed at 10, 20, 30, and 60 degrees. The altimeter reads like a clock. Its shorthand points at thousands of feet, and its longhand points at hundreds of feet. The turn coordinator shows rate of turn with the position of the small white airplane, and whether or not you're slipping or skidding through the position of the small black ball. The heading indicator is gyroscopic, and we use a little knob to keep it in sync with the compass. The vertical speed indicator is marked in hundreds of feet, and it tends to be pretty laggy, so we normally only use it for prolonged climbs and descents. The two instruments to the right of the six-pack are called course deviation indicators, and we use them to track a course when navigating. The top CDI is driven from nav 1, and the bottom CDI is driven from nav 2. Moving over to the bottom left, we have our engine instruments. The amp gauge should show a small positive deflection to indicate that the battery is not being discharged during flight. The oil temp and oil pressure gauges should indicate in the green during normal cruise power settings. The suction gauge should indicate between 4 and 6 for the vacuum powered instruments to work correctly. The tachometer shows how fast the engine is turning. And the tack time below it counts the number of times the engine has turned in units of standard operating hours. At the far bottom left we have the engine primer valve, the ignition, and the electrical system master switch. Jumping up to the top for a second, we have a separate switch to control the radio master, also called the avionics master. We normally leave this switch in the off position when we're starting the engine or shutting it down. Jumping back to the bottom center, we have the circuit breakers, the switch panel that controls pitot heat and the aircraft lighting, the carb heat, which is turned on anytime the engine is run at a low power setting, the throttle, the mixture control, and the switch that controls the position of the wing flaps. The position of the wing flaps is shown in a little dial on the right side of the panel. Looking down a little farther, we have the parking brake, the elevator trim control, and the fuel selector, which can be in the left, right, or both positions. This airplane also has an autopilot control, digital fuel gauge, and digital engine monitor, which are somewhat unique to this particular aircraft. In the center of the panel, we have the intercom, radios, and transponder. Sometimes you'll hear these broadly referred to as the avionics. I'll make a separate video about the operation of the intercom and the radios, but generally the intercom is a selector that allows you to toggle between COM1, COM2, NAV1, and NAV2. In this aircraft, COM1 is integrated with a Garmin GPS that also has a moving map display. COM2 is just a basic aviation radio. Below that we have a transponder which shows our squawk code when we're receiving services from air traffic control. When we're not, the transponder squawks 1200. And finally, on the far right, we have the Hobbs meter, which measures the wall clock time while the engine is running. A second clock, used for navigation, is installed on the far upper left side of the panel. 